Prince Harry and Meghan Markle welcome their second child together on 4 June. But, as she and Prince Harry are no longer full-time working royals, they were under no pressure to immediately announce the happy event or to introduce their daughter to the world. In fact, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex did not share the news until two days later, on June 6. The couple's representative said in a statement, Lilibet Diana was born healthy, the Duchess and the Duchess thank you for your warm wishes and prayers while enjoying this special time as a family. Following the arrival of little Lily, the couple have taken some family time together at home, and while Meghan has been resting, she seems to have recovered quickly from the birth, the Daily Star reports. It's only been 11 days since she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, but Meghan Markle is already up and about walking her dogs, even though her second child, Lilibet Diana, was only born. Prince Harry is also said to be taking to life as a dad of two and has been looking after Archie so Meghan can relax. The source added, Harry is a devoted family man and has been helping out around the house. He loves taking Archie to see the chickens or for a swim in the pool. Harry has previously suggested their daughter will be their last child during an interview with Oprah Winfrey. The birth of Meghan and Harry's firstborn, Archie Harrison, came under completely different circumstances than Lily's for the Sussexes, who at the time were senior royals. As a result, the arrival of Archie was formally announced by Buckingham Palace, albeit with several hours of delays, on the day of his birth on May 6, 2019. Two days later, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex hosted a press conference at Windsor Castle to introduce their son to the world. With Lily, Meghan and Harry had the chance not only to keep her arrival quiet for a few days but could also decide not to share a picture of the newborn for the time being. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle may have stepped down as royal family members and relocated to California, but that certainly doesn't stop them from making headlines. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been named as one of the most respected members of the royal family in a public vote. A new poll conducted by youth health charity STEM4 analyzed the interest in a number of celebrities and public figures, including musicians, online creators, sports people and public figures. The vote was carried out among 1,032 people between the ages of 13 and 25. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex trailed only the Queen who was named the most respected member of the family with 26% of the vote. Despite quitting as working royals last year in a bid to be financially independent, Meghan and Harry were named the joint second most respected royal with 21%. She was praised for her bravery and resilience, and for carrying on, even when things go wrong. Further down the list were Prince William and Kate Middleton, with 11% of the vote each. Those who took part in the study also named other celebrities who they look up to. Marcus Rashford, Lewis Hamilton and Raheem Sterling were the most admired sports people. David Attenborough, Captain Tom Moore and Greta Thunberg were deemed the most inspiring people. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have spearheaded a media empire since stepping down from the royal family. Now, they're reportedly looking to hire the business consultant behind the success of Pussycat Dolls lead singer Nicole Scherzinger to expand their portfolio. According to The Sun, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are hoping to persuade Ollie Ailing, 30, to come on board, having been impressed by his work with Nicole. He was instrumental in successful Nicole profitable endorsements, together with tie-ins with Muller Nook yogurts and Perfectal Nutritional Vitamins serving to her amass an $18 million fortune. In addition to endorsement contracts, Ollie sorted Nicole as she landed roles in Disney movies Moana and Ralph Breaks the Web. He additionally helped her return to the judging panel on The X Issue and received her comparable roles on The Masked Singer USA and Australia's Bot Expertise in 2019. Mr. Ailing has labored with Nicole, 42, for nearly seven years as her supervisor however has had talks with Harry and Meghan in California. A source tells The Sun the Sussexes are rapidly expanding their empire and hope to secure the best in the business to help. Since stepping down from their roles as senior royals, Harry and Meghan are thought to have netted greater than $421 million. Specifically, Harry and Meghan have launched several media ventures under their brand Archwell, including a Netflix deal believed to be worth $130 million, according to the New York Times and an exclusive contract with Spotify rumored to be worth $52 million. 
That same month, Megan announced she had invested in firm Clever Blends, which makes instant oat milk lattes. In the year that's followed, Prince Harry has launched an Apple TV Plus docu-series The Me You Can't See, alongside TV veteran Oprah Winfrey, focused on mental health and wellness. Meghan also secured a $914,300 advance on her first children's book The Bench, released earlier this month. An international consultant said the couple's speaker fee was, between the $750,000 and $1 million mark, which they noted, seemed steep, but possible. In June 2020, the couple signed up with the New York-based Harry Walker Agency, which boasts a star-studded list of speakers including former presidential couples Barack and Michelle Obama and Bill and Hillary Clinton. Neighbors and locals in Prince Santa Barbara have speculated Harry and Meghan could become the next couple to join the ranks of other celebrities to open their own winery. Insiders say the move would make a lot of sense if they were to add a winery to their $14 million mansion. The idea could especially pique the interest of Meghan, who is also known to be a huge wine fan and named her now-defunct lifestyle blog The Tig after her favorite red wine. Prince Harry and Meghan are predicted to become the world's highest-earning celebrity couple with a fortune potentially stretching to $1 billion equals £700 million within a decade. That compares to the Queen's wealth which is estimated at £350 million. Despite their success post-royal family, the Sussexes have been criticized for plugging their own ventures during rare public appearances. The Duchess of Sussex has been widely criticized over the past year for the negative impact she and Prince Harry have had on the royal family. Leading UK cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Asim Shamalak claims the Duke of Sussex's hair loss has accelerated since he moved to the United States. However, the good news for Harry is his balding is slower than Prince William's and he is 10 years behind his older brother when it comes to hair loss. Just after the birth of Archie, Harry's bald patch was on show at the launch of the Invictus Games countdown in Holland, and had extended greatly down the back of his scalp. The Harley Street consultant told Fabulous Digital that fatherhood and the recent stress of feuding with the royal family could be a factor, but his genetics played a stronger role. But despite the Duke of Cambridge's early balding, he has crowned the world's sexiest slaphead in blogs and other pages online in March this year. The Queen has met Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison today at Windsor Castle, as she misses the Royal Ascot horse race for just the second time in 69 years. Wearing a yellow shift dress with blue flowers, the Queen was photographed chatting to the Australian PM at the Berkshire Royal Residence's Oak Room on Tuesday. The Queen and Mr Morrison are both fully vaccinated, having received two doses of the Covid jab. The meeting was Her Majesty's first in-person audience since early last year. Thank you for watching. If you liked, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. We will update the latest videos about the royal family every day. Thanks and goodbye.